Welcome to Wall Street News Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Economic, demographic challenges mount for China early in 2024. Hong Kong property prices hit lowest since January 2017 on high interest rates. Toyota suspending shipments of 10 models due to testing issues. Stop creating so many problems for Anwar, key ally urges Malaysia politicians. Taiwan risks losing another Pacific ally after Tuvalu election. Economic, demographic challenges mount for China early in 2024. South China Morning Post. China is facing an unprecedented challenge to sustain robust and sustained economic growth this year. The 5.2% year-on-year growth in 2023, which was reported earlier this month, could create envy for some, including those who are fighting the effects of the protracted Ukraine war and elevated inflation. Electric vehicles in China are also bustling, and domestic tourism is strong. But sequentially, China's growth seemed to have lost momentum in the fourth quarter, while price levels were also subdued, adding to deflationary pressure. Hong Kong property prices hit lowest since January 2017 on high interest rates. South China Morning Post. Hong Kong's lived-in home prices fell for a second consecutive year in 2023, reaching their lowest level in seven years. The property market has been weighed down by high interest rates and a sluggish Chinese economy. Prices fell around 1.4% in December, with the overall secondary home prices falling 6.7% for the year. The market is expected to see more pain in the first half of 2024, with prices predicted to drop by as much as 5% before stabilizing in the second half of the year. Toyota suspending shipments of 10 models due to testing issues. Bloomberg. Toyota will temporarily suspend the shipment of 10 vehicle models after supplier Toyota Industries disclosed certification issues for some diesel engines. An investigative committee found irregularities during horsepower output testing, which used computer modules running software that differed from that used for mass production, resulting in values with less variation. This is the latest certification issue for Toyota, following an announcement by subsidiary Daihatsu last month that most of its vehicles were not properly tested for collision safety. Stop creating so many problems for Anwar, key ally urges Malaysia politicians. South China Morning Post. Abang Johari Tun Openg, the leader of Sarawak, Malaysia's largest state, has urged politicians to stop undermining the government in order to bring political stability and focus on economic challenges. Johari stated that domestic politicians need to stop creating instability so that leaders can concentrate on strengthening the country's competitive advantage. Johari's warning comes after reports of opposition leaders attempting to undercut Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim. Johari has thrown his support behind Ibrahim, stating that Malaysia needs a stable federal government regardless of who is in power. The political turmoil has impacted Malaysia's currency, with the ringgit falling 2.9% against the dollar this month. Support for Ibrahim has also dropped, with 43% of respondents stating they are dissatisfied with the economy. Despite this, the partnership between Johari and Ibrahim has been beneficial for Sarawak, with plans to establish a state-owned bank, port, and airline, as well as provide free tertiary education for locals. Taiwan risks losing another Pacific ally after Tuvalu election. Bloomberg. Taiwan's diplomatic relationship with Pacific nation Tuvalu is under threat after the incumbent prime minister lost his seat in parliament. The result may also threaten a significant security agreement between Australia and Tuvalu, which was signed last year. Three Pacific nations, Tuvalu, Palau and the Marshall Islands, still maintain diplomatic relations with Taiwan, but this could change if Tuvalu switches its recognition to Beijing. However, it is not guaranteed that Tuvalu will break with Taiwan, according to Meg Keane, director of the Pacific Islands program at the Lowy Institute think tank. ACCC says government should intervene in childcare market to keep costs down. ABC. The Australian Competition and Consumer Commission, ACCC, has called for direct government intervention in the childcare market to improve accessibility and affordability. The ACCC's year-long investigation found that childcare is neither affordable nor accessible for many households and that increasing subsidies have been offset by rising fees. The ACCC recommends simplifying the system and removing or reconfiguring the activity test that limits subsidized care based on parents' working hours. The report also noted that the cheaper child care reforms package, which reduced out-of-pocket expenses, was effective but that ongoing monitoring would be needed. The ACCC also highlighted the impact of labor shortages on the sector, noting that less attractive pay and conditions, increasing responsibilities, and the need for unpaid personal time for qualifications have led to staff burnout and shortages.
the report suggests that governments should consider directly funding or delivering childcare services in areas where they are not available. The ACCC's recommendations have been supported by childcare provider representatives and advocacy groups. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Six from the Six Degrees World, here to bring you the latest news from around the globe. Today, we discussed several economic and political challenges faced by different countries. China is grappling with the task of sustaining robust economic growth amidst a slowdown in the fourth quarter and deflationary pressures. Meanwhile, Hong Kong's property market is feeling the effects of high interest rates and a sluggish Chinese economy, with prices hitting their lowest level in seven years. Toyota is also facing hurdles, as it suspends shipments of 10 vehicle models due to certification issues. In Malaysia, political instability is impacting the economy, with opposition leaders attempting to undermine the government. Finally, Taiwan's diplomatic relationship with Tuvalu is at risk, which could have implications for a security agreement with Australia. Now, let's dive deeper into these stories. China's economic growth has been impressive, but the challenges it faces cannot be ignored. The slowdown in the fourth quarter and the subdued price levels are adding to deflationary pressure. As for Hong Kong, the combination of high interest rates and a sluggish Chinese economy is taking a toll on its property market. It's a tough time for homeowners, as prices continue to fall. Moving on to Toyota, the company is facing yet another certification issue. This time, it's related to diesel engines and horsepower output testing. It's important for companies to ensure proper testing and certification to maintain consumer trust. Otherwise, it can lead to significant reputational damage. In Malaysia, political stability is crucial for economic growth. The leader of Sarawak has urged politicians to stop undermining the government and focus on strengthening the country's competitive advantage. It's a timely reminder that stability is key for progress. Lastly, Taiwan's diplomatic relationship with Tuvalu is under threat. The loss of the incumbent prime minister's seat in parliament could lead to a switch in recognition from Taiwan to Beijing. This could impact not only Taiwan's relations with Tuvalu but also a security agreement between Australia and Tuvalu. These stories highlight the challenges that countries face in various aspects of their economies and politics. It's a reminder that stability, proper testing and certification, and diplomatic relations are all crucial for sustained growth and development. That's all for today, folks. I hope you found these stories informative and thought-provoking. Now, it's your turn to share your thoughts. What do you make of these challenges faced by China, Hong Kong, Toyota, Malaysia, and Taiwan? Do you have any ideas or solutions? Let's discuss. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6 Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email.